Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard, where I have special guest Scott Goofston here today. We're talking about Disney and general theme park news. Let's get right to it. Scott, how are you? Nice to have you back on the channel. Thank you for coming back on. Yeah, thanks for having me. And so today, we are going to talk yeah, mostly Disney stuff, maybe dabble some Universal stuff, maybe some Six Flags. We'll have to see how much time we got, a little 30-minute period we got here. So, coming out to D23, as you're discussing the beforehand, are you excited? How excited are you to come to D1423 this year? I'm excited. I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of excitement around it. There typically is for uh, the D23 reveals and panels, and um, I, I think folks are uh, expecting a lot. I hope I hope Disney delivers. So if they bring the goods, yeah, me uh, too. <laughs> what realistically for the Disneyland Resort and I guess Walt Disney World do you think will be uh, not presented announced to you? I think the sure bet is uh, something new on Avatar for Disneyland. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would hope at the very least we at least know where it's going, right? Um, <laughs> that would be a good, uh, yeah. good, uh, good answer. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if we'll get any new art. I don't like. I, I think if I had to guess for, for, for Avatar, it's park, maybe a better – um, understanding of what it actually is, like as far as mm -hmm. an experience or whatever, whatever term they're using at the moment, um, I think we'll get a, a better feel for what it actually is and where it, where it's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, is I think that is the safest bet, and also uh, some type of update on Avengers e-ticket. Um, yes, if, that's you know, the one I'm looking for. If if we don't get that in the expo, then I, I guess that project is is dead it's it's not um i'm very confident that we'll get a significant update on that and something new to look at and i think a timeline um uh, mm -hmm. for that project yes so that'll be exciting yeah I, like i said uh, before to some others i'm like man as long as i get some concrete dates for things then i think i'll be just pretty even just for one thing yeah, I think I'll be pretty satisfied uh, because if it's you know, last of us, you know, last G23 Expo was just all like nothingness. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was not good. But with the political issues resolved on both coasts with the zoning and the DeSantis, uh, Disney really has a clear runway for them to just no really roadblocks from outside roadblocks. So I think uh, they I think they got this. It's all on them. And they know that. So. Uh, now, even the strike, they are the you know, the uh, potential uh, strike in a labor game that they resolve that. So now they have really nothing blocking them from announcing start dates and actually starting things. That'll be exciting. Even uh, I'll be jumping them down if I hear the uh, start date for the parking garage of the what was the Eastern Gateway project over there. I'll be like, yes, finally, woohoo! Yeah, I mean, I I think it's possible that we'll get something on that even before expo like it i think you, so yeah if you look back past years for expo they love the week before they love to kind yeah. of yeah it's it's things that they decide are not worthy of the panel and mm -hmm. it just it, it seems to line up that type of thing especially people coming to anaheim it seems mm -hmm. like that would be the thing to say you know this project is back you know here's a, a 2.0 version of the artwork that we shared back when we weren't able to do this and now now we can um you know I, that that is what makes sense to me uh, i was talking to someone about this and they said that if, if there's any anticipated issues with businesses then maybe mm -hmm. they don't want to do that right before uh expo so maybe it's something that's announced like after the completion of expo but um i think we're pretty pretty close to them giving us something on that yeah, because, you know, that'll be uh, massive because that'll take, what, I feel like not more than a year and a half to do that. So that way they can open up that, uh, you know, the space behind the Hollywood bathhouse there for something. Yeah. 
something it, pretty impressive, you know? It, it's kind of like one of those puzzles that has the square pieces and you have to move it to be able to move yeah. it to complete the picture. And it's like that, that, that has to happen. They have to start mm -hmm. that so they can move, you know, the, the bus and so they can start expanding and like that, that Eastern gateway has to start for us to feel like all of it is moving forward. So I, I hope we get it soon. So there's been some lots of rumors around. Where do you think that Avatar is going? Uh, do you think it's going in the symbol lot or do you think it's going in the Hollywood back lot? I've been hearing a lot of Hollywood back lot stuff from, but I don't know. Like, maybe we've got a plan B. Maybe they're doing the Simpson, or, uh, Simpsons symbol lot um, next. Uh, now that Ford's approved, where do you think it can go? I I think the Hollywood back lot just makes too much sense to not think that. I mean, I think mm -hmm. the, the longer you like, you know, the concept art, I think maybe made people start thinking about even more places it could go. But that that concept art, it really was not clear, in my opinion, that that, that concept art represents what we will see in the park or what, we, what mm -hmm. would we see like in an attraction. And mm -hmm. like the distinguishing there is, you know, are they truly building a land? Are they building some type of experience that replicates like what, what they showed us in that concept art? Um, so it, I don't, from the concept art, even though it was exciting, I didn't really change what I think makes sense. And that's mm -hmm. for the, for it to go in the Hollywood back lot. It's just. And it's even in that concept art, let's say, I think it's, let's say pretty close, right? Now, who knows? Because, you know, uh, it looks like the type of the Shanghai type of boat ride system there. So, yeah. which we know has massive screens. So what if that was a, concept art mostly from like inside the ride itself you know like exactly. you never know exactly what it is so exactly you know so it could be it could be like that impressive and that big but just a giant screen type of thing and then the actual land we actually don't know what it looks like it so i'm very very curious it's interesting because you no know, as you reported the earnings calls two days before and you know we first heard about avatar on earnings call so it's hilarious uh, do you think I don't know? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like they won't announce anything or tease anything on the earnings call because D twenty three will be literally the next day, like for media. Or, yeah, nah, two days. I, I, I feel they, like it'll just be a standard earnings call. What do you think? No, I think they're gonna announce something. Um, oh, on the earnings yeah. call. Yeah, I I don't know if it'll be big, Ooh. but I think they're gonna want to start the momentum in that call. True. That so you know it, whether it's right. like a, a something. I think it'll be something that'll get headlines and then it's kind of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this, it, and there's more being announced later this week, but mm -hmm. they tend to want to announce things in there that, that shareholders will get excited about. Mm -hmm. And so it's probably whatever Bob Iger views as being the most exciting announcement. So, you know, if it's a toy story, attraction being put somewhere <laughs> you know like a toy a toy story avatar uh, any of his his major ip pillars like he might find something to announce there and then it kind of leads into um them talking about d23 that's just a a hunch based on what they've done previously but i i don't think a company like disney that also is seeing their stock is down right now would mm -hmm. would be willing to like um phone it in on a an earnings call uh, just mm -hmm. because they want to hold for an expo um so i i think there may be a little something that's right because the stock is at 89 dollars today yeah um but maybe because that's a good point, though, because you know they have usually they have you know they, they have the models, right? So maybe they'll tease like maybe Avatar, tease something, and then say ooh, and then present like the model for said thing or you know something um, at the expo, which would be pretty cool, and then that'd be good. And like you're right, a good starting off point because it's just two days before, yeah. And then there can be uh, the stock will shoot up after hour. No, actually, it's, it's in the morning, so the stock will shoot up during the day. And then everyone be like, oh, super exciting. And then they can get more information. Oh, well, we can. Yeah, that'll be that's smart. Yeah, start the hype train early. So that'd be pretty. And is there, do you know the reason why Disney moved their stock thing? The past couple times, of course, it's been in the morning. 
Um, did they think that it was a reason for that, or did they just think um, that they just want to change it up? What do you What do you think about what? Why is that? I really, I don't know. I don't know if. I mean, it. It's. It's a major shift from what Disney's done, and I mean, even in this one, that's before. Or, like, oh no, yeah, sorry, I just got a thought, because you know, maybe they think you know people like us. No, I feel like a lot more regular people listen into the call. So maybe they think if it's like five thirty in the morning Western time, people are sleeping, and that way they don't have to listen in and then criticize them. Uh, maybe I mean, it, it's not a it's not a bad theory because the, doing in the morning it allows for a full day to. F- flush out all of the the news instead of ending mm-hmm. a day with it and you, you're stuck with a long cycle before anything that's that's reported from earnings is flushed out but like with this one they're doing it before before open but they're yeah, also issuing open. a press release before which they did not oh, do. really yeah so they're issuing a huh. they're issuing their earnings mm-hmm. and the release and then they're doing the call as a q a so even the last earnings call was before, but this time mm-hmm. this is even more different than that, where they are putting everything out before and then doing Q and A on the call. Um, so on the call, there won't be the well, so it won't be like the typical where Bob Iger has you see some pre-recorded video and they just like stuff. Will they it, literally just be literally Q and A the entire call? It that's the way it made it sound. Like I think they'll make a statement. Interesting. I think they'll make a statement and then they'll take questions, but I don't think it's going to be your typical earnings call where they run through everything. I think it's the the notice they put out made it sound like what they put online, the re, the earnings release and the actual report will kind of speak for itself. And then mm-hmm. I, I would think Bob would be on the call, but but I think all of those folks are going to make a statement and then take questions is is the impression i'm getting from so what they that means the questions would have to huh when so the release would come out just that morning yeah the release i think would come out at like 8 or 7 30 yeah. or 8 a.m eastern and then they have to call at like 8 30. so wow okay so the questions be like pre-recorded like some other times then uh no no i mean the, the, oh, yeah. yeah it it would be um investors shareholders that have that are on the line to ask questions okay, and that, so and the call, a, yeah. but it just it doesn't have that wow. you know where where Iger talks for yeah 10 minutes for, and kind of yeah. reads his version of the release it sounds like maybe they may still do that but the, the notice they put out makes it sound like they might just be putting out their statement and then kind of leaving that to speak for itself and then taking questions hmm. That is interesting. Yeah, I'm curious for all the. Yeah, that's kind of strange, but that's I guess kind of cool. I guess it's still no information right away. Yeah, Yeah. that's. I think last last time they did this before earnings, the thought was they had good news to share, and then Mm -hmm. uh, the the stock did not perform well that day. So, I really, I mean, if I if I had any better gut on how all these earnings calls would go, then. I'd probably stop being a journalist and start being an investor because <laughs> I feel like anytime I have a, a gut feeling on it, it kind of goes the opposite way, but we'll see. Yeah. It should, should be very interesting. Cause I believe it's in about two weeks, the seventh. Yeah, exactly. Two weeks from today. Yep. So uh, that'd be um, a pretty, Oh yeah. Cause then, so the yeah the expo starts the ninth, but the usually the media day for the expo is the eighth. So really, it's like a five straight days of Disney type news, which should be pretty yep. interesting. It's gonna be a lot. Yeah, wow, that'll be you'll be quite busy that day on the Twitter Twitters. Huh? Yeah, I'm glad I'm not traveling on the seventh. So <laughs> not trying to travel yeah. to D23 and listen to an <laughs> earnings call on the flight. So yes, I'm I'm glad it's on the seventh and not the eighth. Yeah, man. So, what do you? So, Tiana's. You haven't been to uh, Tiana's by adventure in Florida, have you? Yeah, yeah. I wrote it. Um, oh, you did. Here. Yeah. What did you think? Uh, I I liked it. Um, I Ooh, good. Uh, Splash Mountain was my favorite attraction as a kid uh, growing mm-hmm. up, and I loved 
love the ride. I'm, I'm a bit, I just always love log flumes. My favorite, mm-hmm. my, my real favorite ride was the log flume at Six Flags over Georgia and Atlanta growing up. Oh, <laughs> and it was just, <laughs> just a, a, just a log flume, the ugliest log flume ever. Mm-hmm. But I just <laughs> liked it, liked it as a kid. Um, so Splash was my, uh, was my favorite ride. I, I love what they did with Tiana's. I don't love how they did it. Uh, I mean, it's, um, it's having lots of issues. Uh, I, I think they, um, I think they rushed to try to get it done at the end mm-hmm. and probably could have used another month or two. Um, but it, 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 it's a little reminiscent of, uh, reminiscent of rise of the resistance where when that oh, ride yeah. opened, it was amazing, <laughs> but man, it broke all the time. I mean, I can, mm-hmm. I went to the, the preview event, for that for media and for, for rise at Walt Disney world. And mm. the ride was not working like even during the media oh, the media and like oh, no. there was, there was all these issues. I remember like Disney never said this, so this is not official, but there were rumors that like all the equipment that people were using were like interfering with uh, the sensors. And there was like mm-hmm. radio frequency interference that was messing up the vehicles and like, the ride could not stay open. So it felt a little similar to that with Tiana's, but you know, we're a month, a month since it, it opened and it's still um, having these, these stability issues. So, but the ride itself, I, I really in, enjoyed the ride. I think um, they kind of made the decision when they switched the story to make it a Bayou you kind of have to go hard and heavy on animatronics because mm. otherwise it's, it's really just living with the land. If you, if you didn't go, yeah, out, you know, so like they mm. had to do that. I don't know what other, what are the things they could have done with the scenes? Um, I would have liked to have seen more of the critters throughout. Um, but you know, the, I, I know that this ride is created a ton of discourse and people want to have a take on everything. Um, but when you ride the ride, as long as it's, it's working, it's a, it's a good ride. Um, and so I, you were able to get a full ride through. Yeah. I was without a breaking. Okay, yep. that's good. Yeah. I think the, the, one of the times I did it, like a couple of the animatronics were not working, but I, mm-hmm. I don't, but you didn't, you didn't have to get evacuated or anything. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I never saw when I was there. I never. I wrote it half a dozen times, and I never Ooh, saw nice. any major like breakdowns or evacuations or anything. Just a couple issues here and there with animatronics not synced up. Um, so it was. Oh. It's it's good. I I think the better version will end up being at Disneyland because I think they're learning a lot, mm-hmm. uh, and I think. I think Disneyland will end up with the better, better version of this ride. So we'll see. Yeah. After riding it, do you think that this ride was designed for Disneyland's version of the attraction? Um, I mean, I can see why people think that. I don't. It's going to be hard until I actually see it, mm-hmm. but I can definitely see why. Um, why people think it maybe will make more sense with the layout at Disneyland. But where that doesn't really work is, I mean, they've had to do a lot to like retrofit the Disneyland one, like building, like mm-hmm. changing the walls. Like they were doing a lot with the infrastructure um, outside that they did not do at Walt Disney World. And that kind of tells me that maybe it's the other way. And that, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But I see why I, I have seen people try to, uh, say that but i i think i'll need to see it at disneyland before that i can fully feel good about that analysis i won't dismiss it but i i don't know now in the ride you know seeing a lot of people say oh that looks like it's not a dead space is there actually a lot of dead space in the ride or is this just look that, look that way from a, a dark video or any video it's not dead space but uh the way the way when you would ride splash mountain is you're constantly Mm -hmm. everything's lit and you're constantly Mm -hmm. looking around at everything you're looking Mm -hmm. 
this might upset fans of Splash. And again, I said Splash was my favorite attraction growing up. There's a lot of times where you look around because there's not a whole lot to going on. Uh, there mm-hmm. are critters, but you're looking for the movement. You're looking for the action. Um, mm-hmm. And so that is kind of what you do when you would ride through Splash for Tiana. It's it's a lot of nature, and you're looking mm-hmm. ahead at Tiana, and you're looking ahead mm-hmm. at Lewis and all of the scenes. Mm-hmm. And when you are constantly looking ahead to something, it it creates a just as a person natural just blind spots to things because you're mm-hmm. you're looking past what's around you up ahead at something. Um, now the reason you're doing that is because there's not a whole lot to look at to when you're, to look around at <laughs> on the Tiana ride because everything is looking ahead. Um, so it was a definite, it was a definitely a, a decision that they made, but I think it's mm-hmm. kind of created this feeling that is not wrong that people say it feels like there are these dead spaces. It's because you're constantly, you know, if you're driving through a, if you're driving through a, a, a city and there's nothing around, but you see a restaurant at the end of the road. Like th- those are dead spaces because you're, mm-hmm. you're driving to a destination and it kind of feels that way in Tiana's. You're constantly trying to get up to the scene where Tiana is playing with the critters or uh, Mama Odi is up ahead, you know? So um, I get, I get why people feel that way. It does. It doesn't bother me. The, the empty spaces or lulls do not bother me the way that i think they bother other people interesting yeah that makes that's a good analogy because yeah it makes sense yeah because there's it's they're definitely doing on like on purpose especially when the rest of the room's kind of dark and there's like a spotlight on like lewis then like yeah clearly you're supposed to you know, yeah your eyes supposed to dart to lewis um yep. so it makes that makes sense um, and again at the disneyland version our i know our film's a bit faster so yep. i feel like that dead space thing will probably be more or less so because we'll be going through it faster so even even if it's the same exact thing we won't be in it for as long so i feel like it'll be less of an issue for people maybe so yeah it's a good guess point we'll have to see yeah which is interesting so that's that's cool and uh i'm sad we didn't get that naveen uh that concept of naveen on the boat uh but look i'm curious if maybe I still think maybe Disneyland will get like an additional scene or two, only because because, and that's a little bit different. I'm curious how Disneyland's version of Wolf like differ in some ways than the Florida version, which will be uh, which you'll be able to tell because you went on you would have gone on both. But I'm curious to you if Disneyland version will be improved in some ways that as well too. Yeah, I think I think that scene is is from the from before they made the changes to the story. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I did see a few people hoping and speculating that it would show up at Disneyland. It, I, I don't, I don't think that's happening, but mm-hmm. I also would ask the question, like, are we sure we really want, uh, they've, they've been having issues with these animatronics. Are we sure we mm-hmm. want an animatronic in the water? Like, and what, yeah. Sure? <laughs> Seems yeah, like that's, that's asking good for point. trouble. <laughs> Thing will work on for like one hour and then it will never work. Yeah. Never if, work again. If, if that was the plan, uh, which I'm pretty sure it wasn't. I mean, when I, what I went to, to Imagineering back in April mm-hmm. and they showed us mm-hmm. the Tiana animatronics and the ones that they showed us were the ones for Disneyland and they were mm-hmm. all the same as the ones that were put into Walt Disney World. Doesn't mean that there's not some that they didn't show us, mm-hmm. but, um, I, I don't think that that, that scene is, is a thing for, for Disneyland, even though I, I liked it too, but yeah, maybe not in the water is a good idea after seeing yeah. the issues that we've had. So how was imagining? I forgot you did you just go on that trip that that must have been amazing. How was that a whole experience there? Yeah, that was it was cool. It was really neat to see those up close. I mean, uh for all the issues that the animatronics have had, like with um you know running consistently sometimes, uh they mm. are impressive really really impressive um animatronics uh to have in a ride like that and to see them up close was was really cool um it kind of i i had been very frustrated just as a fan with the whole Mm -hmm. project kind of leading up to that point because i didn't think we had a clear 
uh, explanation yeah. from them on like what what it is we were getting. So I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. Like I think the feedback I gave to Disney was I, I didn't really know what to get excited about because I didn't really know what we were getting. Mm -hmm. um, but getting to see the animatronics up close uh, definitely helped my uh, optimism for the ride. Just because you could see that there there was going to be a lot of uh effort put into uh what we were going to see in the the attraction now so as its issues but um it still got me excited so that was it was cool to see that so did you get to meet uh mr josh tomorrow or bob Iger in that uh imagining trip uh they came out and talked um right at the beginning of a, a little panel right at the beginning of our day uh, so no, I, I didn't oh, talk to either cool. one of them. So, but yeah, they came out and just said something really quick. Um, but yeah, I think, I think if I look back, I think it was, it was close to earnings, the previous earnings call. Um, mm -hmm. I'll have to go back and look. There was some, something he was actually, uh, Bob was out there to meet with Imagineering to like finalize plans for something. <clears throat> they didn't tell us what. Um, mm -hmm. but if, or, and they were doing like annual reviews too, I think. Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah. So it was, he just happened to, to kind of be at the, the office. Um, no, yeah, it was the day, it was the day before the, the shareholder meeting. That's what it was. Yeah. Cause it was, oh wow. which is what made it so surprising that he was, you know, that Bob Iger was at Imagineering. Mm -hmm. The day before the big shareholder meeting where there was the proxy battle and they didn't know how that mm -hmm. was going to shake out. Um, yeah. So that's, that it was, it was surprising to see that he was spending his time at Imagineering in a very probably stressful time for the company. So. Yeah. And that's actually, that's kind of like a hopeful sign. Cause you know, it shows that no, he does care about the parks project. So that's, that's kind of a good positive sign there. It is. It, it felt, I 100% I felt that way too uh, when he was there. But now I'm kind of like, I, I want I want to pay off on that. Um, on that feeling. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. right? Let's, let's, let's put, put our money where our mouth is and, and deliver on that optimism. <laughs> so, at Walt Disney World, uh, Tropical America seems pretty likely. Does this idea excite you? What do you think about this uh, Encanto attraction and Indiana Jones ride, non-clone but still a Jeep ride? What do you think? Yeah, I, I've, uh, I'm excited about it. I, I think we will get. Um, you know, I, I think the rumor is that it's a non-clone for Indy, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think that's probably accurate. Uh, so I think we'll get a little bit more on that. I think we'll get some updated, more um, clear art showing what what the land will look like. Um, I'm not sure if we'll get a, a lot on Encanto. I don't know. Um, I, I think we might. I think it makes sense for Disney of old to, to show us and to give us what that is. But um, part of me wonders if they won't hold back uh, the mystery a little bit on what that ride or attraction is going to be. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely intrigued by how they're going to handle that. I mainly just want them to start. I just want them to start. <laughs> <I know. laughs> just like build anything, just start. <laughs> just put shovels in the ground. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Disneyland's cast members, as you know, uh, as of today, they came to a, a tentative agreement on their new contract for, uh, say, a three-year contract. Um, rage increases, seniority increases, and um, the attendance policy, which I know was big. Um, shout out to the cast members. What do you think about that? Think, uh, think they're going to vote for? I think they'll vote for, it, but think they'll certify it. Um, how do you think about it, that whole process? Did you think a strike was ever actually going to happen? Uh, I, I didn't, but I think, um, I, I know they were prepared to do it, but I just don't think, 
I don't think the two were as far apart maybe as everyone thought they were. Like, I think it was mm -hmm. really, um, you know, the Disneyland is going to operate up until a deadline and the unions know that. And so you get in these negotiations and it usually comes down to like, like 95% they agree on and it's the 5% is what they have to figure out. Like who's going to give up this, you know, like just getting into the nitty gritty. And so they mm -hmm. kind of just wait each other out. And I think that's, I think that's what was happening with this one. Um, I think they were ready to do that. I just, I never really believed it would get to that point. I don't think Disneyland would let it get to that point. And I never, from what I was hearing, they were not so far apart that it was, this, this wasn't like the, the writer strike that we had uh -huh. where you kept hearing like, they're so far apart. Mm -hmm. It's inevitable. Like, you know, like it, it, this was not, a situation like that it was just they had to just get it down on paper and they they had to figure out a few um important but not the the chunk of the 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 contract they had to get those things agreed to so um but super happy for them glad it all worked out i mean it was um a strike would have been i think it would have been bad for everybody um mm -hmm. And I, I'm glad they, I'm glad the, the the union got the the fair, absolutely fair requests that they were making, and it it's it's a win win for everybody. Yeah, because yeah, now they're not beating, they won't be striking during D23, and I think will be uh, going on quite as as planned, which is good. And yeah, curious to see the uh, you know the act some of those details like you know what their wage goes up to and uh, what maybe the new attendance policy is. Um, that'd be exciting for them. But uh, yeah, it should, it should be pretty good. Um, but yeah, I think, hey, I think, you know, Disney went through a, a kind of a tough time between 2020 and 2023. <laughs> so I feel like now is that they resolved a lot of their issues, at least politically. So. And now with the cast members, so I think I think 2024 and beyond, will be some at least for the theme parks will be uh, you know the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, what do you think there? Yeah, I mean, I I think the the parks are in a bit of a a lull at the moment, but a lot of that is just because you have uh, what was not non-organic travel surge to theme parks happening the last mm -hmm. couple of years and things are going to mm -hmm. stabilize now like everything has we all know that uh people are dealing with inflation and it's it's a tough forget theme parks like it's it's a it is a decision to go mm -hmm. see a movie to go out to eat mm -hmm. um and that only is naturally gonna trickle down to all theme parks not just disney um mm -hmm. but I, I hope that Disney doesn't do what they sometimes do, which is when things are good, they look at ways to increase guests. Oh, yeah. And then mm -hmm. when things are bad, they want to cut. And um, for, you know, I, I just hope that they can uh, stay the course a little mm -hmm. bit and not get cold feet on these expansions that they need to make to continue to grow that they've committed to making, they've committed to spending all of this money. Um, they don't need to be looking at short term, you know, market issues. They mm -hmm. need to think like they thought before COVID, they need to think long term and keep, you know, keep moving forward with all of these plans and not suddenly decide, nope, we got to start cutting and trimming and you know i i don't think they're doing that but i i do see some some signs that are a little concerning um like some of the entertainment cuts at disneyland mm -hmm. things that i just don't understand i don't i just don't get it i don't i don't know why it seems like pinching pennies 
in a lot of these places um, makes a lot of sense. But uh, I, I hope that's just, you know, them adjusting and not like a sign of how th things are going to be going forward. Yeah, I hope it's like I said, them adjusting. Uh, maybe because they're preparing like for some massive entertainment offerings for the 70th anniversary, so maybe they're trying to cut here to spend more there. Hopefully, I don't know, but um, yeah, because that yeah, it's a big anniversary next year, and yeah, I hope. Yeah. Good point. They're on the expansions. Yeah, they committed to these 60 billion dollars in expansions. Um, yeah, they talking about Disneyland Forward, all this good stuff. So I hope uh, any short-term issues don't they don't get cold feet on expansions because you know it's been proven when these uh, the expansions are built hordes of people come and you know it, yeah, they need the expansion so uh i don't think they will but i i hope i hope they they don't because uh that would be very sad <laughs> very yeah. sad for for but i feel like and they just went through too much trouble to do some of these things so i feel like it'd be very stupid for them to just back off you know <laughs> so yeah hopefully fingers crossed but uh, I do, yeah, for for and I'll say real quick for the seventieth, I do think uh -huh. we'll get we'll get some some updates on what that's going to look like uh, at Disneyland. We'll get that during the, the expo. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm hoping. I know it's not coming, but I just want. I'll do whatever you want, Scott. Whatever you want, you can paint the night back. Okay. <laughs> I I am optimistic. More optimistic at this second than I have been ever about that parade returning next year so and there have been rumor i know there have been rumors about that parade forever and there have been rumors even about it coming to walt disney world like it that's how See, bad i don't want were. that no 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 and i don't i don't think that's real but but like that just shows you how bad people want it is is how the mm -hmm. rumors have even transcended coasts uh but i mm -hmm. i i think um i think next year might be the year but um, it, it, I, I feel the best about it that I felt uh, at any point, even when there were seemingly very, very solid rumors on it coming back, like, mm -hmm. what, two years ago. Uh, I feel pretty good about it. So, I guess, because I know those folks are just sitting there. Oh, my God. It's the best parade ever. I will be there day one <laughs> if and when it came back. Because, I mean... And look, it'd be like a like a full circle moment because you know debut during the 60th anniversary when I was there, and now I'll be back for the seventh anniversary. Hopefully, uh, it, ten it just, years later, that's crazy. It's already ten years old. That parade you know, when it makes its, if it makes its return. Oh it my. all it all makes too much sense. Like it just makes too much sense for it to <laughs> not happen. So let's let's just will it into existence and get it back next summer. <laughs> Yeah, it's my, my favorite parade ever. Man, well, hey, Scott, thank you so much for popping up on the channel. Again, you're welcome anytime. And everyone, go follow him on Twitter. If you want if you want to find out Disney news before Disney even posts it, that's Scott. That's right, because he has the inner wizardness and he just pulls the article out before Disney even publishes it. So follow Scott on Twitter. Um, I don't think you have an Instagram, do you? Just Twitter? I have it, but I don't use it. Yeah, I have no, on okay, Instagram. Yeah. But yeah, oh. don't follow me on there. You're not going to get yeah. anything except yeah. like, photos from five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So, yeah, follow me on Twitter for all the instant news. I mean, Mayor Bell's come to California Adventure. Excited for that. Found out via Scott. An hour. Yeah. Ago, so. I don't know. I don't know yeah. what that is. I, I would love to dream big and hope that that's coming into the theater. Um, <gasps> oh, an Encanto show. That yeah. would be really cool. An Encanto show, the Hyperion. But I, I, for that. I, I have a feeling it's it's something it's smaller. Like, yeah. Yeah, especially because it's just Maribel. So maybe if it was like everybody, I'd be like, oh, big well, show. But that's just her, right? Well, but I mean, yes, for vocalists, but they have. Um, within the last, I mean, it's still listed on the audition site right now. They're looking for mm -hmm. lookalikes for um, Louisa and. Um, oh, oh yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, what's the you other one? Isabella. That. Yeah. 
exactly. Yeah, so they're they're yeah. looking for people to portray those characters, but only vocalists for Mirabelle, which um, tells me that it's you know like a I don't even I don't even know I don't even know what it would be at DCA. Mm -hmm. um, but, maybe like a medium scale show or something like something maybe on the the, the outdoor theater or something uh, out yeah. Paradise Bay thing. Very curious though. That'd be that'd be pretty cool. Or but or maybe maybe even you know they did the Coco stuff during Halloween. Maybe mm -hmm. they'll add like Encanto and Coco stuff in yeah. that Viva Navidad. That'd be pretty cool too. Hmm. I thought about I thought about Viva too. Yeah, that the timing of it. I think the audition or the submissions were due or are due like first week of August. It's a pretty tight mm -hmm. turn, so. All of that would line up for limited, limited time holiday offering. Um, so, I think that's a good theory. And that'd be great because that Coco show is amazing, and I love Encanto. So uh, that would be great. Ooh, I like that. Scott, I think we're on to something. I think we're on <laughs> something. You'll be the first one to report it, so it'd be great. But yes, uh, go follow Scott, and we'll see him at D twenty three with his breaking news coverage and it's gonna be amazing then we'll have him back on because scott's a great dude give him a follow subscribe become a youtube member and as always have a fantastic day